Today we are very blessed and privileged to have Dr. Sam Kamalesan with us. Christians in India and in many parts of the world know Dr. Sam Kamalesan. He doesn't need any introduction. God has used him mightily, especially in our nation for so many years and uh, used him so greatly to preach the gospel in this nation. Many people have turned to Christ through him. Uh, right here in Purasavakam, he was a pastor for so many years uh, at the Methodist Church here. And uh, he studied here, grew up here in these streets and preached on these streets. Uh, and so he is uh, the son of the soil here. He belongs here. Even though he's been in uh, California last, for the last nearly 40 years working with World Vision, uh, to uh, teach pastors and so on around the world. He has traveled to countries in those days which were uh, important to penetrate with the gospel like Poland and Romania and all those countries in the days when it was difficult. He has traveled there and preached the gospel in even South America and Brazil and all of those places and so many countries. He has ministered to the pastors of these great nations and at this age he has traveled and come and it's always a blessed privilege for us to have him here and to speak for us here. I know that most of you know who he is, but there are those that are new generation Christians nowadays. Newly come into Christ, you don't know uh, too much about the Christian faith and the, and the great men of God and so on. So I'm always happy to have him for that reason also, so that the new people will, knew, will know Dr. Sam Kamalaisen. Uh, the wonderful anointed servant of God who was loved by so many young people in my day when I was young. He was the preacher to go and hear. And there was always a big crowd going to hear him in those days, I remember. So blessed to have him. Let's welcome Dr. Sam Kamalaisen. Thank you, Pastor. Thank you. How good it is to be with you this morning. This is the third service and uh, you look fresh. I was a student here in veterinary college. Do you know there's a veterinary college here? Yes. Yeah. It's a school of higher learning. They have expanded their academic ability When I gained the required education and um, wanted to go for a completion. My mother took me to the altar of the church where I grew up. There is a city called Tiruchi. Only one person knows. My mother had widowed when she was very young. I was only four years old when my father died. To get out of home, to taste boundaries, 
that I had not tested was one thing to do it to be profitable academically was another thing my mother suggested at the altar of the church that I serve the Lord in ministry said I had dedicated you to the ministry of the Lord when you were born now is the time for you to fulfill it I told her I had no calling no direction and it will be a mistake to enter the ministry without a compelling call I didn't use these words these words look sterilely intellectual now my words were full of emotion and my mother understood me she did not impede me let me go entrance into veterinary college tuition was not very high at that time and uh, I was in the hostel um, in Vepari I didn't venture too far Mukatal Street would have been the farthest <laughs> I was just out of town and but that's how it started during summer we were sent to a farm a government farm in Huzur would you know there's a town called Huzur believe me a huge farm there during the British days it was a horse breeding center when the British left it was dismantled and India brought some excellent shindy cattle no it's not a lesson in animal husbandry but some of you know that the best milk type animal probably in the subcontinent is shindi shindi is red in color don't ask me if it is red like a sari no animal is red like a sari red is brown in cattle and uh, Huzur had some really excellent herds and we were supposed to work with them get our practice strengthened one evening after the classes a friend of mine and I went for a stroll in that thousand acre farm his name was Shankar Narayan Shankar had not been a Christian when he joined veterinary college is my English understandable I thought some of you were floating away somewhere and it could be my fault rather than yours we were walking and Shankar was talking to me Shankar had believed in Jesus Christ after he came to Chennai 
and he was fresh in his faith, it radiated. It was not a dull guy. Shankar always infected you with his vitality. Some of you look like you need that vitality. Shankar walked with me and as we talked he said, Sam, are you a Christian? Because I had asked Shankar to please pray for me. I had faith in the effectiveness of that fresh faith that was exuberant in him. So I asked him to pray for me. He said, yes, he will. But then he said, before I pray, let me ask you a question. And he asked very boldly, are you a Christian? Now, if I hadn't wanted him to pray for me, I would have punched him on his nose. But I controlled myself and I said, what do you mean, am I a Christian? He said, Sam, do you have a claim for the term Christian, are you? I told him everything that I had been drilled into. You know, in a, in a church life, you get drilled into programs, don't you? If you don't, you ought to find another church. Tamilla, Tamilla Peslama, Angela Servisla, Torti Utruingla, Tamilla, Nyano Ubades Vina Vidai. Teri Mongleke, Tamilna Letteria de. Catechism is a teaching. Every young man and young lady goes through this. They cannot be installed into membership without the pastor saying they have done it. I went through all of that. So I told Shankar my qualification for being a Christian. He said, they're all great, but not any one of them qualifies you to be a Christian. It's sometimes very shocking that the institutions on which we put our faith for qualifying to be a Christian baseless. So I asked Shankar, what will qualify me to be a Christian? Shankar said, you need to be born again. I was very confident that I knew the scripture. Every Sunday we had to memorize in our home that Sunday's portion of um, epistolary reading and gospel reading. Are you tracking with me? Is my language foreign language? Do, do you understand gospel reading, epistolary? Okay. Then the collect for the Sunday. All this was a requirement in our home. It was a very um, biblically oriented home and I'm thankful to God for that. So I told Shankar, this is my background. On, on top of the cake, I said my name is Samuel and that's from the Bible. Somehow I thought that if you had all of this, you are foolproof about being a qualified Christian. Are you listening? Yes. Are you listening? Yes. Way at the back. 
in the last row will you put your hand up are baba i asked the last row <laughs> good i am glad you are awake yes and um, you must be born again i said where does the scripture say that john um, my friend shankar took me through john's gospel chapter 3 and verse 3 you know that scripture don't you why do you steadily stare at me is that a game you and i will play when i ask you a question you say either yes or no simple isn't that right yes. bolo na yes. bolie is that right yes. bolo na is not writing bolie where does the bible say took me to the third chapter of john a man called nicodemus comes to jesus by evening why because there was still the embarrassment of a man who was challenging the establishment so strong that if you went to see him they cat the categorized you with him so he went by the shade of the evening he was a ruler of the jews Im- important man learned man he said to jesus rabbi you must be from god you can't do these things unless you are from god jesus cut him short he said except a man be born again rabbi you can't do the things that you are doing except you come from god and jesus answer was there is a gateway to the kind of life that i am living and that is to be born again you need to have a total regeneration of your value system it's a value centered kingdom anything and everything does not go are you now listening still listening Jesus said Muhastudi Do you know that word? You don't. Flattery. You know that word? Right. <laughs> Flattery doesn't work. That's what Jesus told Nicodemus. Don't do this. it doesn't help you un help me see in the, in the um, um, gospel just before nicodemus comes to see jesus he has changed water into grape juice i prefer to use that word if you don't mind he had changed water into grape juice and of that finest quality people were stunned so his fame spread everywhere nicodemus came on the wave of that fame so jesus had to quieten some of the wrong expectations are you listening yes. i'm glad you're here 
so important that we listen and not think that everybody is fooled like we are. Listen. Jesus did not let Nicodemus get fooled. You must be born again. Somehow, if I must wake up from the disillusionment that is my religious order, I need to be born again. Urvan marubdiyam peravavital devanudiya rajyate devanudiya rajyate Devundi Rajate. See, I make so much noise. You are so many. You don't make any noise. Devundi Rajate. Ah. Karnamatan. He will not see the kingdom. Leave alone. Enjoy the values of the kingdom. You can't even see it, Baba. How will you enjoy it? For God so loved the world. Jesus' leading was, unless you go through what was God's gift to mankind, you will not enter. How do I go through a human being? What is involved in this? There are two things. And... Uh, there is a well-lit clock on top of the screen. You don't turn around. <laughs> Believe me, it is there. And I'm watching that. I don't know what your <laughs> limitations are, but I have my limitations. So please, for one day, give up your rights and stay as long as... Is that all right? Yes. We have already had our communion service, haven't we? Yes. yes. I've enjoyed two services already, both of them in the vernacular, and this one in English. And Jesus he ended up the time with Nicodemus by saying, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him. Unqualified. Avan kittu pohamu nithya jeevna yadayim bidiki. He gave him and loved the world so much. Two things, love that gives. Second, faith that saves. Because of love that gives, there is faith that saves. That is a possible option for you and for me. 3,000 years after the occurrence, God still saves. Love that gives. The greatest power known to mankind is love. Don't rebel against that. Keep it and think and you will think clearly. In, in Tamil, we have a proverb that says, Anbukkum undo adekum thal. Are there anybody who understands Tamil in this service? Urmadri <laughs> Okay. 
Okay. Love that gives. Love is the most powerful thing known to mankind. If we were to compare the love that we are thinking about now from the scripture to an actual experience we have had, it would be the mother's love, the closest it comes without any adulteration of carnality, it is a mother's love. Love that is creative, conquering, selfless, sacrificing, deathless, luxury and leisure denies to itself. That's a mother's love. If you have never lived with a mother, you don't know what I'm talking about. Love, that is the focus of poetry. Strong men wept when love was denied to them. That only enhanced the strength of their manhood. Naya all around, Allaya, he is weeping for what is not in the society. Even Jesus wept, didn't he? Bolo. Yes. yes. Love. The Bible says, love that came through Jesus was a gift of God. What necessitated that gift? Something happened to relationships. Let me suggest to you, truth is known at the point of relationship. Am I right? No. Think before you know. Is it not true? You know a truth at the point of relating to either that truth or the evidence of that truth. Only then you can say, yeah, I understand that. In more home relationships, truth is discovered. God is love, says the Bible. If he is love, how will you know that? Except you relate to him. How will he reveal himself? He will reveal himself in Jesu Christu as love. If you don't know Jesus as Savior and Lord, you have not known love. If you are a believer, and I think you understand that term, the earliest term that described the Christians in Jerusalem was the term believer. Today also, even in the current context, the most penetrating description will be he or she is a believer. Assemblies of God. Who are the members? They are the believers. The I-Thou relationship. Can I relate to God? Question. Can the Creator God become known to me? Question. If you put holiness and sin together, what is the result? According to the scripture, the result is wrath of God. Then how, how can humanity relate in openness 
to the holy God above. That is why, for God so loved the world. If God didn't love this world so much, he wouldn't give his son in order to set right what was otherwise impossible to set right. And if he did give his son so that that relationship can be set right, we must know how important it is to God that he relates to you. It's not a play thing. Rumba satta morana. Nukunya porlama. Kekering la. Kekering la. The velayatilla. We are not playing Sunday three services. We come here because throughout the week we are hungering for Him. What we have tasted has whetted our appetite so much more that we want more. Kunjam rusitta yenir ullam completed. Nobody knows Tamil. If you know Tamil, you don't know how to complete this sentence. Kunjam rusitta yen ullam kenjude innum teve. Terima ungalke seyula yade. That's poetry. Are you listening? Kenjude. Ya ena kinnu veno. is part of the story inside nature of God's love. Do you, have you ever read any of Charles Dickens' works? One, only one, in all this region, only one person. Yes, two, oh, three, four, they're all at the back. The learned people are sitting at the back. <laughs> Charles Dickens wrote a novel and called it Tale of Two Cities. Are Bhavo, unless you say, yes, I know that name, uh, it, it sounds kind of hollow for me to talk about Charles Dickens. There may be a dog in your room in your home named Charles Dickens. <laughs> I'm talking about a literary genius. He wrote a story and he called it Tale of Two Cities, London, Paris. Two men, strongly re resembling each other. They almost look like identical twins. They both were in love with one girl, but the girl could reciprocate the love of only one of them. Such were the days then. <laughs> Thank you. I am glad you are awake. I wanted to test it whether you are listening. That's good. He crossed over to France to do business. French detained him. Put him in prison for some unknown reason that I don't remember now, they were keeping him in the prison to uh, decapitate him. Word got to England. All that this man had to do was to abide a few hours. The French will do the dirty job. Then he could go to the girl and say, I'm the only one you have. The guy didn't do that. He went to France, smuggled himself into the prison, got to the man and said, change man, change. And the condemned prisoner changed the clothing, escaped. And the man who was not guilty stayed to die. Now that sounds sad, doesn't it? God so loved the world. It's a sadder story than that. 
There were a group of guys called themselves Brains Trust in England. And one day somebody asked them, which is the greatest tragedy in the world? They examined this, that and the other and finally came up with the acceptance. John 3.16 is the saddest story in all creation. God gave, man rejected. That is the tragedy. If God gives and man accepts what happens, according to the Bible, it is faith that receives. Active faith connects with love that gives. Initiation starts with the love. If love doesn't initiate, there is nothing to connect to. If this was Kerala, I will ask Manasalayo. <laughs> Are you listening? Yes. Very important to me that you listen. This is precious word. This is God's gospel. Faith that saves. What is faith that saves? You have stuffed sinus. That's bad enough. And then you're running a temperature and you don't sound as if you're above earth at all. You're somewhere underneath, submerged under water. Then somebody says, I had the same condition. Ingama Inji Chuk Rending Disi Kurtang. Now you remember those stories? Colloquial home remedy. But it worked. It released my stuffed nose. And I got whole. And you keep telling everybody because it works. It is faith that connects. I made contact with him. Yin Rachaher. He is my personal savior. He resides in me. There is nothing alien anymore with the creation. I am part of the whole thing because the Creator God is my Savior. Are you listening? Yes. It's demolished. It's gone. I have no hope. Please build me back. I want to live for you. I want to exist because you are my savior. I want that relationship. And I want creation to be friendly so that I live. Father, please bring life into my family life where there is no truth come truth be the one who relates between us <clears throat> faith that saves its active connection it's not pretense it's not boastful about my own intellect. Nothing 
centers around me anymore because what is centering is on Jesus. Okay, let me go and then close this. Have you ever had surgery? No, I don't want to th threaten you <laughs> or scare the daylights out of you. But sometimes surgery becomes necessary, right? You won't even say yes to that. <laughs> yes, I have had surgery. You believe in a surgeon, otherwise you won't go to that operation theatre. Believe me. Chetalan Chetapoma Angaboy Saumada. Yeah, I'll I'll die naturally, but I won't go into that theatre. You believe in a surgeon. And you commit uh, yourself into his hands under chloroform. When you are anesthetized, you don't know beans about what's going on to you. That's true. That's why they do it. <laughs> no, I'm not trying to be smart. I'm trying to illustrate something to you. Faith is that dependence. In Andover, in Retschehr, who said that? Thoma said that. Thoma, the missionary that came to India, he made that tremendous statement, my God and my Lord. What does that mean? That means I have no fear, no questions, I am not the one who is in authority when I am relating to you. Ayah, you are the authority. Nire Andavar, Nire Devan. Are you embarrassed that I talk in Tamil? No, no, no. Yes, that's right. You and I learnt English. Amma, Appa came naturally. Right? If you ever become <laughs> embarrassed of what is natural to you, you are a mixed up kid. <laughs> Yesu. Raja, I don't know beans about you, but I want to. I want to start the life of faith. Lead me, don't, don't give up on me. Don't be impatient. I'm slow in learning. Faith comes, not easy to me. Yesu, Raja, Irangum, son of David, have mercy on me. Do you remember who shouted like that? Bartimaeus. Um, do you know what Jesus told him? Your faith has made you whole. Go, man. Nobody is to be credited for what happens to you. You, your faith. Faith that saves. I want to tell you a story and then I am through. Circus, have you been to a circus? Kerala Circus. Tamil Nadu, Kerala Circus is uh, famous. Na tappu naka, kadisil oru kyula nillunga, I will listen to you. <laughs> Kerala Circus. Tightrope walker. His name was Blondin. Frenchman. He truly was an artist. He said he will prove that there has been nobody before him or after, can be after him greater than him. 
So he stretched a tightrope across the Niagara Falls. It was pretty broad. And he began to walk at a set time, on a set day. Both countries, Canada and USA, had their people waiting to look at the spectacle. Obviously, they paid for it. He walked, crossed over. There was a sway in the middle because there was a slack and then the rope swung and the guy had to find balance. But he stabilized himself, walked on, jumped on the other side of the um, river, clapped. Then he turned to the crowd and said, do you believe I can cross on that tight rope? Everybody said, we saw it. If we see it, we will believe it. That's what mankind says. Pata number one. If I see, I'll believe. So the man said, okay, uh, you believe that I can walk. Which one of you would have confidence in me that you will let me carry you back to the other side. They said, we are not crazy. You go, you do it again if you want to, but don't get us involved. The man offered a huge amount of money. Somebody in the crowd said, yes, I will. Here the account varies. One account says he picked up the man, put him in his shoulder and then walked. That's hyper risky because the man wiggles, you're both gone. Another account says he put him in a wheelbarrow and wheeled him across. Whatever, he took this human cargo responsibility and walked. Inch by inch toward the middle, the sway and the risk the regaining of balance. A group of people who, who took a bet that the fellow will not make it shook the cable just to give some thrill. The man still stabilized, took his human cargo safely and jumped down. They, they cheered. Two friends were in the crowd. One was a believer the other was not a believer. Do you understand me? Yes, Th thank you, thank you, thank you. The word Christian was not coined first. Just the word believer was coined. And um, one was a believer, the other was an unbeliever. The believer said the un to the unbeliever friend, friend, do you believe Blondin can carry a human cargo? The friend said, of course, Kandene, I saw that. Wouldn't I believe it? Then he said, friend, would you be the one that permit Blondin carry you to the other side? The fellow said, are you crazy? Not for all the gold in the world. You believe that Blondin can carry? Yes, I do. But you won't trust him? Do you hear me? Do I have to shout? That whosoever believeth in him, Nambunga, Nambunga, Sumapri, Vandu Poite Irkadinga. Don't come every Sunday. Just sit quietly, piously and feel that you have satisfied your requirements. That is not our requirement. Finding the faith in the Lord, living that faith on Mukatal Street, that is our requirement. To be dressed up, to be dolled, to be presentable, to let people of that city of Chennai know that you are a hyper-qualified intellectual, 
These things are not a requirement. Kating la kaklea. Chumo kandri king la. Not not a requirement. There's precious little time. You need to hustle and say, Lord, I need you. I wasted. Only little is left. Please take me. Take me. Energize me. Turn me loose. Let Chennai know that there is a redeemed guy, redeemed girl. Faith that saves. It is love that gives, that's done. Faith that saves happens every day. And it happened on that day in Huzur form. And it changed not only my life, but the life of so many people in all the continents of our world. Today, it can save your life if you say, Jesus, come, change me. Would you like to pray with me? Would you bow your head, close your eyes? Would you say to Jesus, I waited, I waited a long time. I waited because it seemed an embarrassment to warn that I am a sinner, but I am a sinner. Nampavi, Pao say the word, say the one. Manu, you, only you can forgive me. Living Lord, only you can. Your blood, let it cleanse me. Redeem me, Lord, that in my family, in my city, among my people, I will be redemptive in relationship. I lay myself down at your feet. In Jesus' name, if you made this prayer, say Amen with me. Amen. Amen. God bless you. I'd like to ask you, would you own and say, Brother Sam, I have. Today, I cleansed and related to him in a fresh, clean way. I am his and he is mine. Would you raise your hand so that Yes, don't, don't, pre don't pretend, don't be ashamed. If you did it, do it. I can't raise my hand because I have my shoulders out. Not that I am ashamed. Put your hand up and say, I have received him and I belong to him now. Put your hand up, up, up. Good. If you received him today, would you raise your hand with me so that we can pray together? Right, 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 right. And Lord, I pray with these my brothers and sisters, walk with us, hold our hand in the cool of the day. Adam walked in God's creation, return us to that creation that we may walk with you 
in reconciled wonder and joy. In Jesus' name, say Amen. Amen. Right. God bless you. Go with you. You look so angry. <laughs> Be redeemed and let Chennai see a redeemed face. Is that okay? Yes. yes. So, God bless. That could be one way of saying, enough of that, go sit down. <laughs> How do you think? <laughs> but Chennai needs to see a redeemed face. Amen. Right? Not an angry face. There are too many angry faces in Chennai streets. Purasoko, you be the salt of the earth. God bless you. Pastor. <laughs> well, let's stand up together. It took a Sankar to tell a Samuel about Jesus. How do you like that? Everything is upside down. Samuel should have told Sankar. <laughs> But it took a Sankar to tell Samuel. There are many Samuels like that. I'm also another Samuel. <laughs> I'm sure there are many Samuels who grew up with the scriptures, grew up uh, in the church, grew up going to church, grew up with the Christian rituals, grew up with a Christian background and a heritage, an ancestry. Some gener for some generations, but do not really know the Lord. We think that these things qualify us to be a Christian. Just a name from the Bible, we think, has qualified us to be a, called a Christian. But it is not so. You can have Matthew, Mark, Luke and John for your name, you know. But still it doesn't just a name doesn't call it doesn't change anything what we're talking about is not a change of religion it is a change in such a way that it's Bible calls it new birth being born again and I tell you every person born in this world needs a, another birth because we're all born to sin we need another birth we need to start all over again have you ever wished that someone will help you to start all over again so your past can be erased and you can start brand new and this time everything is going to be right? That's what this is all about. Your past can be erased, your sins can be erased. A new lease on life, a new chance with Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You can begin new and live a fresh new life with a new power with a new nature, with a new ability. That's what this is all about. And I don't think anybody should come to this church and end up saying, well, I didn't know that, you know. That's why I'm saying this. <laughs> you shouldn't in the end say, well, I went to AFT, but I didn't know that I must be born again. Well, we told you. <laughs> you know, you must be born again. Unless you're born again, you cannot even see the kingdom. If you can't see it, how are you going to enter it? How are you going to be a part of it? Yeah. Must be born again. Are you born again? Yeah. That's the question. But the guy asked him, are you a Christian? <laughs> that can be an upsetting question, but everyone has to answer for yourself if you are a true Christian, if you are a Christian because you are born again. That's the only way to be a Christian. There is no other way. Let's lift up our hands and give thanks to God for the truth. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come. We thank you, Lord, for this great truth that even if we hear it a thousand times, it is still afresh and it is so true, so real that we all need to be born again. If we are born in this world, 
from a mother's womb we need to be born again of the spirit and i pray that every single person here will ascertain for themselves their position their status that they will not assume that they are christians or presume they are christians they will not just think that it is so because somebody said something but they will look at what your word says that you must be born again our lord jesus christ himself has said that we must be born again and i pray that every person young and old here no matter how long they've been christians how many generations they've been christians they will make sure that they give their heart to the lord and invite jesus to come in and be born again have this marvelous experience of regeneration a change of nature where everything changes because of the power of the gospel the power of god thank you father may your spirit do a mighty work in each and every person's heart that have heard the word today we bless we pray your blessing upon your servant you have made him a great blessing to so many in this nation and around the world and i pray that even at this time i pray that you his strength will be renewed like the eagles that he will go from strength to strength every day and continue to preach and glorify you and bring many to christ we give you all the glory and honor and praise in jesus name we pray now may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of the father and the fellowship of the holy spirit abide with each and every one of us for now and forevermore amen